I will never, ever forget my first meeting with Dr. Ziegler when we were talking to him about the idea that grew into Jumpstart, the AmeriCorps program that trains college students to work one-on-one -on -one with preschoolers. Of course, we thought he hated the idea and was completely unhappy and about to throw us out of his office based on his demeanor and how he was interacting with us while we were talking. And then at the end, he said, I like it and I'll give you $1,000 to help get this idea off the ground. It completely changed everything for us. He didn't just give us the $1,000 from the old Bush Center for Child Development. He also gave us an office right around the corner from his office, which was the first Jumpstart office ever. What started in that office has now grown into truly a national movement. Over 60,000 college students have served as Jumpstart Corps members. They've worked with over 120,000 preschoolers all across the United States. And I'm not sure that any of that would have happened without Dr. Ziegler giving us that first thousand bucks and believing in us and believing in young people, which is one of the many amazing things about Dr. Ziegler's entire career. I was very early in my career and participating in a conference in Burlington, Vermont, at which Ed was the keynote, of course, as always, and I had some very minor role. And um, at some point during the day, um, there was a press conference being held and uh, Ed was gonna meet with the local reporters and. Uh, invited me to come and participate. And I said, oh my God, um, I no way. I'm too intimidated, uh, I'm afraid of the press, I'm afraid that I'll be misquoted. And he, said, he looked me in the eye and he said, let me tell you something. Um, if you want to kind of play in this arena and want to have an influence, you have to put yourself out there and be willing to speak to the press. Do your best at putting out there what you want to say, but remember, never forget that once you say something, you have no control over what people do with it. So you give it your best shot. You don't expect to have any say about what happens after that. Um, and if you can't handle that kind of pressure, then don't expect that you're going to be able to make a difference in that arena. I never remember Ed wanting to be on the camera, wanting to be covered, wanting to be quoted, except if he thought it would assist and help the issue. Ed embodied for me how one can utilize academic training to continuously try to make the world a better place for everyone. I look back on my career post Yale and recognize that it was not by accident that those 35 some odd years at the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving were centered around the development of policies and programs to support young children and their families. Moreover, on a very personal level, my career as a father has been shaped by his teachings, questioning, and encouragement to deeply understand and engage in this remarkable life event. Thank you so very much, Ed, for helping to steer me onto these incredibly important paths of learning, of being, and of doing.